search. What I'd like to do is take that to the next step now and configure some dynamic navigation. What will happen is you'll specify the attributes and the value ranges and the sort orders and the search appliance will automatically group the content based on its metadata and then the users will drill down on the categories based on which values they like. Um, this provides for a much faster search or a more guided search. Sometimes people refer to this as a guided or dynamic or faceted search. One example is the asset buyer, which is a, a customer of ours. They sell everything from they sell heavy duty equipment, tractors, all kinds of things. You can you can see here if you want to buy a you want to buy a a, a, a front loader or a, a, a grader, you can. I ran a search for tractors, which is very generic, and on the left-hand side, I've got basic categories for whether my tractors are in farming or if they're uh, combines or harvesters. And the number of results is shown. Now, one thing you'll notice is that you get great, this greater than 9,000. The dynamic navigation, um, it runs and returns a lot of search results. Um, not all these results are returned to the search page, but the search appliance does run the algorithms and finds those results in this hits. So this can be process intensive. Um, if, you're run, if, you're run, if you run dynamic navigation with secure results, you're going to need to set up ACLs. Okay? So let me repeat that. If you're going to run secure search with dynamic navigation, you're going to have to use access control list, ACLs, on board the GSA because if you try to run if you try to run head requests for all these results here, you got 9,600 here, 9,800 here, 9,000 here, 20, uh, 270 here, all those all those head requests have to go out to verify the user has access to those permission uh, permissions to the content before we can even return this count to the user. So if the ACLs are on board, that's not a problem. It's going to run in a in a, it's going to run in a in a matter of a second or two. Uh, if it's if those are off board, it may take you know 20, 30 seconds to get a search result. That's not going to be very useful. Okay, so that's only if you're using security with dynamic navigation. When a user drills down on this link, uh, like agricultural equipment, then Dynamic navigation, now they've, they've built their own interface around this, so we're going to see a little bit different behavior here than we would just on the uh, out of the box dynamic navigation. But there is a checkbox here that the user can, desel, uh, can select to deselect this criteria. And what they've done is they've narrowed the search down here. Uh, looks like we're still getting a lot of the same relevant results at the top. If you also select another category like John Deere tractors or let's try something a little bit here that's a little bit more limiting. Okay, I'm starting to get different search results. Um, these multiple selections have been recorded and captured and, and stored. So the history, it's like, a, it's like a cookie crumbs, if you will, being left behind of the categories that you selected. They've also provided some advanced features like drop downs here to expand the list uh, by its category. And if it's, let's see if it's going to show up. I don't know. If it, there we go. Just click on the, the title there and it's going to pop down for you. What it handles, uh, different front ends. So you can set up a different dynamic navigation. Uh, you can have a different group of categories based on your metadata. You can have it set up and configured on a front end by front end basis. So the Eng group goes to the Eng front end, and the sales uh, group in your organization goes to the sales front end. You can have different faceted searches there for them. We support string, integer, float, date, and currency category lookups. Currently, the currency category only works with dollar-based uh, currency. If you want to, now that, what that'll do is it'll also give you the uh, the currency range, automatic range detection. If you, if you have other currencies, you can set it up as a string-based uh, category, and then you'll just have to set up those categories yourself, the, ranges, the range values yourself. We support range values and multi-valued fields. So if you have metadata with more than one value in it, in this last case, the department has five different values for this one search result, then we will add 
accounts to each of these different categories. And then if you select any one of these, like the sales or the marketing <coughs> and the dynamic navigation, it'll still show up on the list. Um, value ranges apply for integer-based amounts and also dollar-based currency amounts. You can also do range-based uh, searching on the dates. What we don't handle right now are results beyond 10,000, so we'll search up to that 90, you know, that 99, 9,999th hit, and then we'll return a, a value that says, here's our, you know, you should display some kind of a result to your user saying that this is an estimate count. It's about 98, 9,600, um, but we don't go beyond the 10,000. So if you're getting search results that are in the hundreds of thousands, we're just not there yet. Uh, Non-USD currencies, but we saw we could use a string value to get around that. Automatic categorization of your metadata. So you have to have good, clean metadata for this to work well. And we don't build up the category list on the left-hand side for you automatically. You just have to go in as administrator and manually set that up. Dynamic navigation doesn't work if you have unification turned on, if you're using multiple GSAs from different regions or different data centers or different departments, and they're combined and they're uh, you know, one GSA s searching its own content, another GSA searching its own content, and then users go to one of those GSAs and it makes a search request over to the other GSA to get results. That's unification. Well, it doesn't work with dynamic navigation. And dynamic clustering, although it says that it doesn't work with it, it's only in the style sheet that it doesn't work. So if you want to have dynamic clustering and dynamic navigation turn on at the same time, I don't think there's anything that's going to prevent you technically from doing that. You just have to go to the style sheet and find a way to display the dynamic cluster results somewhere on the page that's not going to interfere with the dynamic navigation. This is what done Now, we're going to deal with small data sets here because um, well, that's just the nature of what we do in our demos. Keeps things simpler. So we're going to look at setting up uh, a region-based metadata lookup with values between 1 and 5 or possibly more, and a price with uh, dollar values ranging uh, in the hundreds. And I could set up a different front end here with a different set of categories. So I could be searching on department and the writer metadata field. And I have a display name here that can be different than the metadata itself. So in a configuration, you give it a name for this metadata filter that you're going to set up. Here's its display label that shows up as text in the dynamic navigation. And here's the name of the metadata field. It could be the same. It could be different. But that's the name of the meta tag that we see in the, in the metadata. Here's the type. It's a string we chose. We could have chosen multi-valued. And we can sort by count or by value. So count will show you the highest number of results first by value. And the values could be, you know, it could be um, for department, it could be sales is number one, HR is number two, engineering is number three. If it's by value, then it can be alphabetical. So you can choose ascending or descending. So it could go. Eng HR sales or sales HR eng. Click OK and that sets up the, the filtering for that category. And then what you do is you apply it to the front ends. So here's the list of your front ends and you just select them over here and that, that metadata category will then be included in the, in the search results for that front end. And you can enable dynamic navigation for secure search or you can keep it disabled. If you're going to enable it though, you may want to, you'll probably want to use ACLs. So you'll click this if you want to use fast authorization, cache, or ACLs only. Or check this box for using all types of authorization. Again, it's highly discouraged to use head requests for that. When you've defined your categories, here they appear, and you can edit them, or you can add more, and then uh, you can show down, then you're set on dynamic navigation, you'll have to enable it on the front end so it shows the results to your users. Value ranges, just have a little bit of additional work. Specify the label, 
the attribute name, that's the metadata value. Show that it's a range, check that it's a range attribute, and then you can add the ranges manually. Okay, we'll automatically add a ceiling or a floor if one exists, and this is how it'll show up in the, in the navigation. So let's take a look at our content first. Quick check, Athens, ranges. Yep, there it is. Let's pick on one of our documents here. And do a search on the metadata. Okay, here's our HTML document. And here are the categories of metadata associated with it. Region, price, writer, dollar price. Dollar price is a, cur a dollar currency value. So we could set up a currency based um, dynamic navigation. There's also a date here, and here's a multi-valued field under department. <coughs> under dynamic navigation, so serving dynamic navigation, we enable the dynamic navigation, it's a process intensive operation, so you don't want to have it turned on unless you're using it. Okay, now it's available. We're going to add. And here's where you define the categories that you want to include. Let's say um, price will be one. And I can add an attribute. Let's have the display label be the dollar price. And the name of the meta tag field is dollar price, and it is a currency based. And I can do I can set up ranges between 100, 200, add 200 to 400, and 400 to 500. Say OK. And now I can decide which front ends I want to apply this to. So I'll pick, let's pick the default front end. And here's where you enable whether you want to have dynamic navigation with secure results or not. I'm going to say create. I've set up one attribute. I could add more if I wanted to. Okay, let's add one more. Let's go department. Let's put in some text to select it. And it's on the department meta tag field. It's string based and it's multi valued. And I can choose whether I want which order I want to put it in. I'll put it by value first or by count. I'll go by count and go from ascent. Uh, Go from descending to ascending, so the most hits will appear first in the list. Say OK. And add that to the eng list, um, engineering collection. Create it. And you'll see here, these are the, here are the front ends that it's applied to. I can edit them if I want. I have to go back to the front end and enable these features on a front end by front end basis. So under default front end, I'll edit it, go to the search results, and turn on show dynamic navigation. Save the page layout. Run a search on the default front end. Now if I run a search for terms here, I think Mango will return some. Here's my dynamic navigation. Looks like I got dollar price 
because I'm on the default front end. Now, looks like all my, unfortunately, all my prices are above $500, so my ranges didn't really apply very well. You know, let's run a search for sloth here. There we go, much better. So two to 400, five results. Expand the result set, includes all five hits. If I turn the filtering off, I can go to the ceiling. There's the ceiling values. If I go to my eng front end and run a search for sloth, I see department. So here's my metadata dynamic navigation set up for the department category. And I can click on the various results here. And here I'm only, now I'm doing an intersection. It's multi-valued, so I'm only looking for results that have all three of these categories set, engineering, marketing, and support. 